So whether or virtually, welcome, welcome, welcome. If, uh, for those who are in our virtual sanctuary, I want to remind you to please mute your devices. I'll say that again, please mute your devices. And later on in our service where we share our joys and concerns, for those of you who are in the virtual sanctuary, you may type your joys or concerns in the chat. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 67. Oh, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us. That, that your, your way, way may be known upon earth, earth your, your saving, saving power, power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the nations, nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us all. Let all the ends of the earth fear God. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning may be familiar. Take time to be holy from our hymnal number 395. wonderful don't they this morning don't they sound wonderful this morning <laughs> amen <laughs> all right <laughs> and now it is time where we have the opportunity to share our joys one with the other again if you're in our virtual sanctuary please begin typing your joys in the chat and for those of you who are in person if you have a joy to share please raise your hand uh, I'll begin by sharing this past Friday, I was able to um, participate uh, in a special uh, evening with interfaith ministers uh, over at Rabbi Steve and Yaffa's home just across the way. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time of food, celebration, collaboration with other faith leaders. And it was just a beautiful evening. 
So for the joy of connecting um, and discerning where God is leading us, for this joy, we say, thanks. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Other joys. Okay, I see a couple up front. Someone is coming with our microphone. Okay, just a moment, just a moment. We need to adjust the microphone. Yes, you have to use <laughs> your outdoor voice. We want everyone to hear this joy. So give us a second. I don't love technology. I hear it. You're twisting it and I can hear it. Don't do that. Don't, don't hit it. <laughs> All right. So just a little, speak a little louder, please. Pat. Grandson Magnus will be taking the bar this week. Uh, so for that, we are joyful, hopeful, and um, we'll have a report next week. <laughs> for this excitement and joy, we say thanks. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Well, it seems that the pandemic didn't have a lot of effect on having babies. So we have two new babies in the family, one in, um, let's see, one in Seattle and one in Utah. So for uh, a little girl and a little boy, thanks be to God. Amen. For this joy, we say thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. <clears throat> Other joys. Okay, I, I see a hand in the back. I just want to say thank you to uh, Norm and Charles for their dedication and hard work this past week in trying to fix the plumbing thing. If you guys haven't seen the hole, you should see it. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> for this joy, we say thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Are there joys in the chat? Um, today is John's dad's birthday to celebrate his life. Also, was John's birthday on the 22nd. For the joys of celebrating birthdays that aren't promised, for these joys we say, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Are there other joys? Yes, no. Give me a signal. Is, are there any other joys? No. So I encourage you to share your joys with one another. You never know how in sharing a joy, you might encourage someone else. So continue to share your joys this week. And in response to our joys, that we will sing, give thanks. He's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give
Lord, give thanks to the Lord for all that he does for us. And now we come to the time in our service where we also share uh, the concerns that we have for ourselves, for our families, for the community, for the world. And so we want to lift up, continue to lift up the following prayers of healing, uh, prayers for Rich Hacker. Um, let's, let's send extra prayers his way. I spoke with his son, Bart, and while I, um, he was inundated with the, the birthday cards, it was also overwhelming. And so um, we pray that Rich uh, will find some peace and be able to find joy in those cards that we sent. So prayers for Rich Hacker and also his son, Bart, for Ron and Jean Hoffman, Dr. Dan Jenkins, Marge Milberg, Frank Wines, Doris Pittman, Jeff Severson, Sandra Cooper, Janice DeVita, Carolyn Dillman, Jean and Darlene Fish, Dick Menifee, Sally Tuller, George Farnsworth. I received a note from him. I was tickled. He was referencing one of my messages, so he's been watching, uh, but let's keep him in prayer. Uh, Fred Clinton, Dick and Kay Rowland, uh, continued prayers for my cousin Joyce Boring, who is still not doing very well. Uh, but the prayers that we lifted up for my dear friend, Carolyn Martin, were answered. She is now home from the hospital. Um, let's also lift up in prayer those who are facing eviction from their homes, those who are struggling with forgiveness, and for all of the troubles of our world, which are many, and also all unspoken prayers. And so now, um, before we go into our centering song, uh, are there any other prayer requests? I'd like prayers for my friend, Diane. Um, we swim together every morning at the pool and she seems to be getting more unstable and weaker by the day and, and has had some very disturbing news from the doctor. So she needs prayers and prayers for her family. Lord, Lord in your, in your mercy, mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. Prayers. Uh, prayers for my close friend, Cheryl, whose daughter, uh, it was an accident and is now paralyzed in the, in the legs. I'm sorry about that. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayers. Prayers for all those who are without housing, the ones who may soon be, and the ones who have been on the street a long time because it is really becoming a difficult problem in all cities throughout the U.S., Lord, Lord, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. <clears throat> Are there other prayers in the sanctuary? Okay, in the virtual sanctuary, are there prayer requests? No prayer requests? All right. Um, before we go to the throne of grace, uh, let us hear our centering song sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me Seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare. By thy return, sweet hour of prayer, in seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often and found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare. By thine return, sweet hour of prayer. Wow. 
I'll repeat our prayers. Pray softly. Let us go to the throne of grace together. Lord, we come to you in this sweet hour of prayer, giving you thanks and praise for all that you have brought us through this last week. But we also come with heavy burdens, with names of those who need healing, with situations that seem hopeless, and we often feel helpless, but we know that you are with us even now. For those who need shelter, for those who are in fear of where their next meal is coming from. For all of the prayer requests that remain in someone's heart this morning, the prayers that keep them up in the midnight hour, we ask that you give us a sense of peace, that you indeed allow us to find that sweet release. For these blessings, for all of the names that have been lifted up, we ask that you provide a healing touch, make a way out of no way, as we pray in faith together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. And now, we will be graced with a musical selection. Ephesians, nope, sorry, you too can be a pastor. And now our scripture reading this morning will be read by Bobby Jenkins. For this, uh, the prayer reading is Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray out of, that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Now we will be graced with a musical selection, the Ephesians hymn. Jesus Christ, they grant you the 
spirit of wisdom and knowledge of himself that you of truth, salvation's good news. Now in the Lord united, marked with spirit seal. That is why I never cease to give thanks to God for you. And pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ spirit of wisdom and knowledge of himself that you may glory, glory in his goodness. That quiet? Amen. Beautiful. Our sermon this morning is called God's Prayer for You. God's Prayer for You. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Please let me know. Please let me know if you cannot. Hmm. Okay, I, I, I don't know if that, if no one can hear me in the virtual sanctuary, I don't know if that's the problem. That's better? Okay. This, this is it. <laughs> All right, God's prayer for you. Give me a, in the virtual sanctuary, I can see you. So if you can ever not hear me, just wave your hand. I want you to hear this. All right, today's lessons begins with these words. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. Now you may be asking, for what reason is this person moved to go on bended knee and why is it important to me or for me? Before I answer that question, let's look at who is speaking. Many scholars believe that this letter or prayer was written by the Apostle Paul. 
And the reason why Paul's prayer, uh, for the reason for Paul's prayer is that in the verses prior to the ones that were read this morning so beautifully by Sister Bobby, uh, Paul brings to light that there was division between his culture and the Gentiles. It was a society in which the ethnic divide was deep and wide. Sound familiar? We struggle today with barriers in our society that hinder us from living harmoniously with all our sisters and brothers. So Paul is praying that the new church of Jesus Christ be strengthened for the task that lied before them. The task of breaking down barriers and roadblocks that kept the people of God divided. If we are honest with ourselves, we live in a world that is often defined by things that keep us divided instead of united. Political affiliations, race, social status, religious belief, teams, right? Sports teams, and so much more. Paul seems to go to great lengths to explain that God has created us not as Jews, nor Gentiles, but as one people, the body of Christ. We are all one race, and that is the human race. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come this morning seeking to hear a word from you. As we study this lesson, help us to hear with spiritual ears. Help us to open our minds and be assured that you created us out of love. And in turn, we are to love one another. Show us how to be filled with your Holy Spirit so that we may change the world we live in for the better. Allow us to find peace knowing that you pray for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Paul prayed a prayer for spiritual power to accomplish all of God's purposes in the lives of those who were in the body of Christ. I believe that this same prayer is the one that God prays for us. Have you ever considered that God prays for you? Think about it. God, our heavenly father, God is our heavenly father. And as our heavenly father, he wants us to succeed in this life. Like an earthly parent, God wants us to be protected and encouraged to run this race called life with the confidence in knowing who our Father is. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 reads, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Jesus adds, surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And in order to do all of that, we need nothing less than the power of God inside of us to accomplish this task. Paul says from our lesson this morning in verse 16, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. The Greek word dunamis, which is where we get the word dynamite, means power, force, or ability. This special kind of power or the ability to do or accomplish equips us to do good things. This power comes through the Holy Spirit, the presence of God with us. God dwelling in our hearts. God guiding, empowering, and praying for us all. Paul prays that the power given to the Christians in Ephesus might be in accord with the riches of God's glory. That's a powerful prayer because the riches of God's glory are infinite. 
So Paul is praying for God to shower these new Christians with infinite blessings. In other words, non-ending blessings. And God does indeed want this same power to guide us today. In verse 19, Paul speaks of Christ's love for us. Not our love for Christ. He says that God that Christ's love surpasses knowledge. In other words, knowledge can take us only so far. The knowledge we have is imperfect. It's the opposite of what we believe, though, in the world today, isn't it? Yeah. We say that knowledge is power, and many spend thousands and thousands of dollars to be educated. And don't get me wrong. I believe in institutions of higher learning. And I have a lot of student loans to prove it. Knowledge is power, but our knowledge is also not perfect. First Corinthians 13, 19 says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. In other words, it is not our knowledge that brings us into the body of Christ, but Christ's love for us. Paul wraps up today's text by saying that there is an extraordinary power available to believers, a power that can accomplish far more than we ordinarily think or imagine. We can't even dream of the power that God has given to all of us. So God's prayer for us is that we recognize our great need is not just physical strength. Yes, we, we need physical strength. We had a long list of prayer requests that include, included prayers of healing. But what we also need is spiritual strength on the inside. As a body of Christ, we need to be intentional. That means we need to do it on purpose and focus our prayers on the power that is at work within us. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to bow before him in prayer. Prayer has the power to change some things. And one of the most important things that prayer has the power to change is us. Prayer is always the best thing to do in any situation because prayer connects us to the ultimate source of power. And that power is and always will be God. Don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God fills us with the Holy Spirit to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. Sometimes you ask, well, how? Wow, you've been through a lot and it's amazing. You stand up every week. No, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit within me that gives me the power. This fact serves to remind us that before we do anything, we should stop and pray for that power that comes from the one and the only one who wants the best for us. In fact, God wants us to know that Paul's prayer for the early church in Ephesus is indeed the prayer that he prays for us even now is a singer-songwriter, Regina Bell, who made popular a song in 1993 called, who knows it? They're guessing. It's If I Could, If I Could. And the song tends, if you've never heard it, Google it, go to YouTube after this service, um, after you watch the service again, <laughs> then you can Google it. But anyway, the song speaks, will move every parent, everyone who's a parent, because it speaks of parents' hopes and dreams for their child. So just hear just a few of these words and listen very intently. If I could, I'd protect you from the sadness in your eyes, give you courage in a world of compromise. Yes, I would. If I could, I would teach you 
all the things I've never learned. And I'd help you to cross the bridges that I've burned. Yes, I would. Now these next set of words, I want you to get into it. Close your eyes and imagine that this is God's prayer for all of us as his children. If I could, I would try to shield your innocence from time. But the part of life I gave you isn't mine. I'll watch you grow so I could let you go. If I could, I would help you make it through the hungry years. But I know that I could never cry your tears. But I would if I could. Someone this morning needs to understand that God not only loves you, but prays for you as well. We never, we will never be able to run this race or be the hands and feet of Christ if we do not allow the Holy Spirit to move in us. We don't have to struggle through life and learn everything the hard way. That's why I tell my son. Or take on things that do not serve us. Instead, we must realize that there is a power at work in us that we do not need to try and figure out. We need to just trust that through prayer, we will indeed be empowered to do more than we can ever imagine. Let us leave this place this morning with the understanding that we should never think of ourselves in terms of things that divide us, race or class or political affiliations or denominations first. We must think of ourselves as children of God with many brothers and sisters in Christ who is loved by a heavenly father who desires to protect us give us courage in a world of compromise and watch us grow the kingdom of God right here on earth if we would just let him. Amen. And now we come to the fun part of the service, offering time. <laughs> All right. Like to continue to thank you for all of the gifts that you continue to give, uh, your pledges, your tithes, your offerings, and the special giving that you all have been doing for our scholarships for the discretionary fund, uh, your pastor's discretionary fund, which means I can respond to a need in the church or in the community right away, and also for Heifer International. We thank you this morning for your gifts please bring forward the tithes and offerings. And now let us give thanks to God for all of the gifts that he gives to us and also for the ability to give. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, we thank you for these gifts, for the gifts 
that you give to us, from which all blessings flow. We thank those who were able to give, and we also ask for prayers for those who have a desire to give but did not have the means. We ask that these gifts be multiplied for the building of your kingdom here on earth. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our closing hymn this morning comes from the faith we sing, Come and Find the Quiet Center. for this week are as follows. You know, I'm super excited to share, to be able to list all of the ministries that we have here at Sonoma United Methodist Church. The Dynamic Garden Crew continues to be dynamic each Tuesday at 9 a.m. Virtual Coffee Clash is on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And Thoughtful Thursdays Tea with Me is at 9 and 6 p.m., also on Zoom. Spiritual Action Group meets at 12 noon every Sunday, also on Zoom. Our quilting group is back, and they're on the second and fourth Thursdays from 10 to 12 in the Education Room. The Mighty Men of God meet the first Fridays of the month at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And these are several ongoing ministries um, that I'm going to share now. Uh, parish Partners the prayer chain, the prayer shawl ministry, and Christian education. A worship team meets here in the sanctuary every Sunday at 9 a.m. I'd like to thank our worship team, our stream team, our praise team and musicians, all in the direction of Jim McFadden 
and for our special addition to the men's course, Jim Hennessy. Just a reminder that donations for fish are on hold because Sonoma UMC filled up the pantry. And so they will let us know uh, what the needs are soon. So thank you again for your continuous support of this ministry. Uh, flowers this morning for our communion table, aren't they just beautiful? They are from Trish Goodwin, who's also on our praise team and worship team. And we are just so thankful for these beautiful flowers. Thank you, Trish. And the Christian Education Committee is excited to be hosting a family, family and friends movie night, Friday, August the 13th, seven o'clock outside on the church patio. Scott popcorn will be served as well as a beverage. So get excited, tell a friend, and next week we will have some flyers so that you may share with some friends. The Sunshine School is having an honor ceremony this Thursday, July the 29th. Is it at 12, Bobby? At 12 noon, I'm excited to be able to bless our little kids. Uh, so keep us in prayer or come out and see what's going on at our school. And uh, just a reminder, uh, church out, uh, the, the office is being uh, handled very well. Uh, emails are checked daily. Uh, phones are checked, but on um, Wednesdays and Fridays, there are live people in the office. Get excited. And I'm always available on cell phone. Uh, we are looking also for volunteers to help, a volunteer, I should say, to help coordinate our building requests that are getting a little bit, we're getting busy. So it would involve some light homework. Contact the church office if you are interested. And last but not least, remember that our morning worship services are available shortly after we end in, on Sunday morning on YouTube. So if you're away on vacation, or if you know a friend who could use them cheering up, tell them to go to YouTube and check it out. Are there any other announcements this morning? Twice, three times? Sold, but there aren't any more announcements. And so now we come to the end of our worship service this morning. Even in the pandemic, when our sanctuary was closed, uh, the doors of the church were always open. So if you or someone you know is looking for a church home, we'd love for you to come and join us. And now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to allow you, empower you to do more than you could ever think or imagine. Go from this place in peace, knowing that God indeed prays for you. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay hopeful, and remember to love one another. Look forward to seeing you next week.